Alexina. Hi. Welcome to Waterstones. Thank you for having me. This is the first and probably, I imagine, the only ever episode of Bitter Ones, as we're calling it. Um, <laughs> Possibly. But, well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> you never know. It, it could, might take off. It could catch on. Yeah. Uh, you were here first if you're watching now. <laughs> um, so this is your book, Bitter. And in it, you talk about bitter foods in cookery. Yes. And you are quite the evangelical about them, I would say. You have a lot to prove, obviously, because a lot of people will be like, well, oh, bitter. Yeah. So we're going to taste some increasingly bitter things and you're going to explain to me why they're wonderful. That's exactly what we're going to do. Great. Where do we start? We're going to start with a very British thing, a cup of tea. Oh. Right? Easy, right? A cup of tea is probably quite mildly bitter. It's probably also a good example of one of the... Th so at the beginning of the book, I talk about how to work with bitter flavours. Mm -hmm. There's ways to balance them out so that it's not you're not overwhelmed. And actually what we do with our tea every day is an example of that. We... Okay. So, so gonna... we've got black tea here. Yeah. So let's just try that straight up. Let's try that. Yeah. Yeah. Getting a bit of bitterness. Definitely. And actually, that's usually not what you. <laughs> not what you... It's, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise that's the only joke. <laughs> Is that the only pun for the yeah, day? That's okay. It. You're allowed one. That's it. You've used up your greater. Um, so actually, most people won't drink no. it like that because it's actually a bit too bitter. Um, but when you add some milk, when you add some milk, suddenly it rounds out the bitterness. Okay, so let's see. So this is the way that you can completely change the taste of a cup of tea, and it is transformative. Yeah, that's something you might have in the morning now. Yeah. Right. So that's interesting. We all put different amounts of milk in our tea depending mm -hmm. on our the tolerance for the bitterness. Yeah. Um, but also. Fundamentally, this is an example of what you should do with your cooking, right? You shouldn't avoid bitterness full stop. It actually has a place. A lot of the most common ingredients, the almost popular ingredients are bitter, right? Mm -hmm. We love chocolate, mm -hmm. we love coffee, we love tea, we love beer and alcohol. Um, <laughs> we <laughs> and drinking and alcohol. Um, and we love bitter leaves and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not about not having them. It's just about learning how to use them. Okay, where are we going next? Let's go with grapefruit. Great. My One of my favourite fruits by far. I think you say in the book, grapefruit has become my brand. Yes, me, I, me the grapefruit and I are kin. Okay. I'm, I'm sure of it. So um, I love it and I could eat it all day, every day. Okay. And I also, you know, when you go to a hotel mm -hmm. and there's the breakfast mm -hmm. buffet, grapefruit juice. We'll have a conversation later about... <laughs> Hotel buffets, because I've, I'm quite infamous when it comes to a hotel breakfast buffet, but <laughs> I'm banned from most hotels. So, <laughs> shall we? I'm going to take a little bit on a spoon here. Um, see, I used to eat grapefruit, and I don't anymore, because I find it quite acidic first thing in the morning. It feels quite strong to me. But yes. It's delicious. Most people think of grapefruit as sour, mm -hmm. but um, it's sour and bitter, I okay. think, where a lemon is straightforwardly sour. Yep. So it's got a bit of ed bitter edge. But interestingly, one that I think is probably being bred out. So there is research to suggest that when it comes to our vegetables and fruits, bitterness is being bred out of them. So that they're more appealing to yes. our mass market. So spinach years ago, I remember <clears throat> being way more bitter than the spinach you buy today. And Brussels sprouts. And Brussels sprouts, now everyone loves them. And yeah. I don't think it's just because we've learned how to cook them. I think it's because they they've fundamentally changed. The Brussels sprout has changed. So does that mean that you would like to see more bitterness being bred back into them? I, I would, and I think that I wonder if our propen in other ways we're compensating Okay. Because we increasingly like dark chocolate over milk chocolate. We increasingly love our bitter coffee, our espressos. Mm -hmm. And we increasingly love a Negroni, which is a fairly bitter cocktail. And I wonder if we're making up for the loss of bitterness in other areas of our diet. You just described my three a day. <laughs> <laughs> Negroni, coffee and dark chocolate. Um, anyway, where, where are we going after grapefruit? Let's go down the, the bitter leaves. Okay. Root. So all greens and vegetal things have a certain amount of innate bitterness in them. Yep. And it just, you know, I would say probably spinach now is very mild. Um, and then these are a couple of slightly more bitter things. Celery and red chicory. Mm -hmm. So should we start? Let's start with the red chicory. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's actually not too bad. 
Not too bad. It's actually less bitter than the tea was, right? Yeah. Mm. That's, yeah. So it's quite gentle. Mm -hmm. And if you make a salad, it's just a little bit of that thrown in mm -hmm. gives you just another flavor sensation. And it's about when it comes to bitterness, the argument I'm making in the book is we all have, you know, these tongues where we taste things, obviously taste buds. And um, we've got different receptors that respond to the five different tastes. The more receptors you can activate on your tongue, the more interesting the food is, okay. the more delicious. So that's why we want, there are lots of receptors on the tongue for bitter flavors, mm -hmm. and that's what we want to activate them. Okay. And celery? Celery. Is something that I think of as being really inoffensive, and of course is a huge important component of all Italian cooking yes. and French. But my children think it's disgusting. Like they really don't probably, like the taste of it. Probably because it is it is bitter. Yeah. And if you think about, you know, as you said, the basis of French and Italian cooking, like a sofrito or a mirepoix, mm. it's got onions which are sweet, carrots which are sweet, and celery that brings the bitterness. So that's what's bringing the balance of flavour. Nice yeah. Okay. This is probably going to break the microphones. But <laughs> Good old crunch. I've never thought of it as being bitter, but it is. It is. There's a subtle bitter. Yeah. Not unpalatable, although it depends. Sometimes you can get celery, it's actually pretty strong. Yeah. It just depends. And of course, another reason why my kids maybe don't like it so much as they like to remind me is they've got more taste buds than I have. And therefore, kids True. that's why kids can find foods very, very difficult to eat because it, you know they've got that many more taste buds to set off. Also, they are, evolutionary speaking, designed to go for sweet things way mm -hmm. more than bitter things. Right, bitterness can suggest danger, mm -hmm. could suggest poison. Sweetness just tells you lots of calories, lots of energy. So when pe when they're young, mm -hmm. that's what they need to get to adulthood. So the body makes sure that you prioritize eating sweet things, which is why as you get older, your palate develops, as we like to call it. <laughs> um, and become we become more interested in things like olives and you know bitterness and coffee and all those things. Yeah. Where are we heading next? I think we're going to go with tahini next. Oh, gosh. Okay. She's going to... Are you ready? I'm, re I, I'm getting sense of... I'm, sense of I'm warming up. Well, tahini is one of those ingredients which is always, of course, added to other things. Yes. To, and so you have that strong sesame taste that will come through. Um, people most commonly will have had it with hummus. Yes. Um, or with other dressings yes. and things like that. But on its own, mm -hmm. it's so dry and cloying that it's almost, it's quite hard to actually eat on its own. But it is. Is it, it is. really meant to be used as an ingredient and not be eaten on its own? Or do people... Yes. Yeah. I think, you know, even... It will always really get mixed or often get mixed with olive oil, lemon juice and garlic. Yeah. As standard. However, it's important to realise, like, there are... Um, there's, like, the Greek Cypriot kind of tahini, which is often what you find in the supermarkets. Mm -hmm which is much thicker and claggier. Okay. But Middle Eastern tahini is smoother. Okay. So I don't know if you've had that, but you can see it's okay, definitely so yeah. got a more runny yeah. texture. So go Middle so Eastern. So you still get that clagginess, but it's not as, as, as extreme. And I think the bitterness is softer on this as well. Okay. So. This is going to make for interesting viewing as <laughs> the two of us are rendered speechless for the rest of the <laughs> Okay, here we go. It's going all over the place. You see? Like <laughs> Mm. Like mouth glue. Um, but the flavour... The flavour's good. I mean, if you like sesame... <laughs> you look... You sound so convinced. <laughs> mm. No, the flavour is good. And like I say, when it is combined into those mm -hmm. dishes of Greece and Cyprus and Turkey and Middle mm -hmm. East and beyond, it can provide this amazing savoury flavour. Yeah. Um, which is hard to replicate in any other way. Yes, definitely. Um, it's very unique. My mum used to make me eat halva when ah, I was a kid yeah. as a sort of alternative healthy sweet mm -hmm. treat and as we all know it's not nice uh, if you're a child that's not what you want you want a Mars bar <laughs> or something vanilla ice cream uh, yeah whatever. exactly just standard um, not something that sort of basically yes glues your mouth shut for the rest of the day <laughs> although I understand the motivation now yes um, <laughs> okay that's tahini that's tahini where are we going next where are we going next we're gonna go oh we're gonna go for walnuts okay I think good old Plastic walnuts. I think yep. they're such an old-fashioned nut. Aren't Thank you they? so much. Not as sexy as pistachios Not... or almonds no. or anything, but, but they're very nice. Again, I wouldn't. 
I was, if I was thinking about bitter ingredients, walnuts would not have sprung to mind. I would say um, they're very much subtle, subtly bitter. Okay. Um, I, it, but they're the most bitter of all the nuts, definitely. So. And I think the classic coffee walnut cake okay. is maybe so good because you've got a lot of sugar balanced out by bitterness of coffee and bitterness of walnuts. And you say in your book, one of the things you say is to double down. So you talk about how mm. sometimes you can pair bitter ingredients with each other because more is more. So coffee yeah. and walnut would be an example of that, right? So exactly. Cigarettes okay. and coffee. Not, not recommending you not smoke, re but, but that's a classic. Yeah. Bitterness of nicotine, bitterness of a coffee. Negroni is kind of an example of that, isn't it? Yep, two bitter ingredients. You know, in that gin well. and Campari. Yeah. Two and two. So. Why didn't we just make Negronis and have this chat over a Negroni? That was a big That mistake. was an oversight. <laughs> that was a real oversight. Although the last time I had Negroni didn't go so well, okay. so I'm now <laughs> slightly, slightly wary. Episode two of Bitter Episode Ones two. will just be you and I. <laughs> Progressively calmly. getting more drunk as we drink Negronis. <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Can't wait. Nice. So that was all. I, I love walnuts. I love yeah. walnuts. But yeah, I see, I see what you mean. There is that sort There's of There's that bitter... subtle bitterness. I think it's why they're really good in a banana bread, because if you think you've got a lot of kind of sweetness coming from banana, yep. you add in those walnuts, it just kind of knocks it back a little bit. Nice. Okay. okay. What's our next ingredient? Cranberry. Cranberry sauce. Okay. Now, I'd love to try fresh cranberries, but they are very hard to get hold of. And I think like grapefruit, they are a... Um, kind of sour, bitter yep. thing. They've got like a bitter back note. Mm -hmm. Now obviously this has been balanced out with a lot of sugar, yep. but even so you're still getting, still getting that kind of effect. Do you want to do the honors? Thank you, I'll go to the side here. Um, Thank you. I have made cranberry sauce from fresh cranberries mm. and you do need a lot of sugar to make it Balance work. Out. Oh yeah. There's a, but there's sort of, so again, there's a mixture of tang. Yes. And the, the sourness that you were mentioning earlier, yes. but with that bitterness There's just, well. it's the aftertaste, you know, you get yeah. it, it's sort of like tangy at first and then you get that slightly kind of blunt edge yeah. that I would say is the bitterness in the cranberries. Mm -hmm. But this is, do you like bit, Do you like cranberry sauce with your Christmas dinner? I do. Great. Well, yeah. think about what you have on a Christmas, on a Christmas table. This is cutting through all the fat and the richness. Mm -hmm. It's that sourness and the bitterness helps balance everything out. That's why well. it's and it place brings colour. Yeah, lovely colour. And it's place at the table. Yeah. Okay, so we've done cranberry, cranberries. Yes. Uh, in the form of sauce, um, I can see a bottle of beer get, behind oh, you. Yeah. Should we? That's, I mean, so we did. Yeah, we did get some alcohol in there, didn't we? <laughs> we managed to fit it in. Found a way. Here's some glasses. Excellent. Thank you so what much. What nice. I mean, and this is called. You often call beer bitters, right? Yeah. There we go. Thank you so much. And I have to say, this is one of the bitter ingredients that I don't love. I don't, I'm not a beer drinker. Okay. Um, but I think learning how to work with beer in cooking has been actually probably the beer chapter, some of my favorite recipes in the book. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's changed my, changed my mind. I'm, I'm used to sort of beer, like a steak and ale pie mm. or beer battered fish and chips. Mm. And that's always delicious. Yeah. In fact, I, I subscribe that basically any meat cooked in alcohol for a long time <laughs> is delicious. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Yeah. 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 So uh, cheers. Cheers. To you. Um, <laughs> Don't know if I can get past the. Get past the head. Yeah. So that's clearly bitter. And and this is very popular, right? It's yeah. not. <laughs> many 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 millions of people drink this. Would you say that? So obviously there is bitter. This mm -hmm. is stout. Mm -hmm. There's lager. Would you say that the bitterness is in all of those things to varying degrees? Or yes. So when you think about like from the lightest beer yep. and lager up to the sort of stout, it's just a gr it's a sliding scale of bitterness okay. in the beer world. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, from light to to heavy. We have a couple more, I think, to go. Where are we heading after our sip of stout? I'm going to go for another thing that we lots of us drink every day, which is a coffee. Coffee. Nespresso. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've brewed some, haven't we? We have, we've brewed some and, coffee. Um, and again, straight up. Yeah. Actually a similar bitterness to the tea, would you not say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and you can add milk if you want to wear it out and that's what m millions of us do every day right we go and have our lattes our yeah. cappuccino and these are all different levels of bitter coffee intensity balanced out by dairy and am i right in thinking because the darker roasted beans will have a bitterer flavor if yes. that's a word bitterer yes. more bitter <laughs> um and that has palates have been changing so the roasts have been getting lighter and lighter mm. and that means you actually get a sour flavor starting yes. to come through in coffee which yes. i find not so nice but yeah. lots of people love it yes raw coffee beans actually are quite acidic mm. and the whole process of roasting them is to actually in introduce bitterness to knock back the acidity yeah and obviously then it's the coffee roasters decision as to how far to take that etc yeah. etc so yeah, that's why you can get a whole range with coffee from quite quite soft bitterness to extreme bitterness. But it kind of is all about, I think, you know, the perfect coffee is one where the acidity and the bitterness are in balance. Yeah, I think we've got one thing left. We've got one thing left and this is definitely, definitely, definitely the most bitter thing we're gonna have today, okay. I reckon. Where is it? Oh, but it's chocolate. It's chocolate. It's my favorite. But it's not just chocolate, okay. it's, it's 100%. Okay. It's 100% dark chocolate. Um, so this might have a similar effect to the tahini. Okay, so in your mouth. I love dark chocolate. Yeah. I'm a big fan in particular of 85% okay, dark so chocolate. Okay, quite a dark man. I am a quite a dark man, but the one time I had 100% chocolate, thinking I can handle this. Yeah. I mean, I almost couldn't eat it because it was so dry. It's very drying and, and I've only... Yeah. yeah. Are you getting a dry mouth just? I've, yeah, thinking about it. I've only just made the connection now between the dry, the dryness of this and the dryness of the of tahini. The it's a similar kind of mouth drying effect. Is there anything we should say mm. before we eat this because it may render us <laughs> speech. incapable of speech? I think the last thing to say is that every, there are lots of different bitter compounds in food. So all of these ingredients have different bitter compounds yeah. and we have different receptors on our tongue which which is why some people might find grapefruit unpalatably bitter but they're happy to drink a beer at the pub okay um, so it varies for all of us i love the idea that if I, if we need something to drink to wash this down we only have bitter <laughs> drinks to drink bitter on bitter we'll we're doubling down doubling there we down, go like you said Fine, they'll cancel each other out here's 100 okay. percent oh no this is fine it's okay i mean it <laughs> is bitter <laughs> It really is bitter, but it's <laughs> edible. Um, I find this quite hard. <laughs> starting to lose <laughs> the ability to speak. It's incredibly dark. But are they making this mm. for people to eat, or are they making um, it as an you ingredient? You know what? I, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on camera, but apparently you can't keep it in stock. Really? <laughs> okay. <it>? Go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alexina, what was that? <laughs> it's incredibly bitter. Um, interestingly, they also do. I've had one which is 100% dark chocolate with a bit of orange. In okay. It. It's not got any sugar, but I think the association that you have with oranges with sweetness yeah. helps make it more palatable. That is better. I have another. The 100% the I tried was from a different brand, mm -hmm. which I won't embarrass here. <laughs> But it, it was really just not very pleasant at all. And you just thought, there's a reason why they mm -hmm. add things to chocolate. And yeah. that's because yeah. it's inedible. Okay. But that's actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, raw cocoa, very bitter. Yeah. So they add sugar, milk, in the case of milk chocolate to it. Yeah. And that's a, another example of how you soothe bitterness with dairy or sweetness, balance it out with sweetness. So yeah, it's very uh, good for you though. Very good for you. Very, or actually all of these things are very good for you and that's a big common theme. Well, yes, because you point out in your book that the bitterness comes from these compounds and, and these chemicals, which it turns out are high in things like antioxidants, which means that they are actually beneficial to your health and that maybe we should be eating more of these bitter foods purely for health reasons, if not for taste. Absolutely. Right. There's just, it's, you can't lose, you know, it's a win-win. <laughs> okay. Um, what should we, ch I'm trying to think, which of these bitter drinks do I want to cheers you with? <laughs> At the end of that, I'm going to go with the... I'm uh, going to go back to a back nice, to nice little comforting cup of tea. That's very well behaved you. I've gone back to the south. <laughs> Alexina, thank you so much for thank explaining you. a bit more about bitter ingredients. Um, it's been really and, fun. And uh, yeah, I'll leave you with the tahini. I can't take any more of that. <laughs> I'll take that home. Thanks so much. <laughs>